All right, here's an update to the previous video I made about using ranged weapons in melee. Some people made really good points on that, and in hindsight, I definitely realized I, I kind of derped on some of the points I made. Even though this is not exactly an urgent matter, and even though it's for entertainment first and foremost, if I end up talking out of my ass, I want to be called out for it and correct it if I can. So, again, the premise is RPG scenarios, but you know, could be a hypothetical historical situation as well. I made some statements about the bow, about how it's mostly useless as a melee weapon. And in hindsight, I was being a bit of a dumbass about it because I have this PVC bow here that I made quite a while ago, which is still lighter than a long bow with heavy draw weight, but this already has quite a bit more heft than the recurve bow I was showing. So again, the premise is an RPG scenario, but it could also be applied to a hypothetical historical situation. If an archer gets engaged in melee and doesn't have a sidearm, which would not be a good idea, but has to use the bow to defend themselves, a long bow could probably hit pretty hard, even strong. It would definitely be better unstrung because now it's basically a flattened staff and it doesn't have the mass that a quarter staff does, but certainly enough to do some damage. And a heavy draw weight longbow would certainly be rigid enough to even allow thrusts. Now, of course it flexes, that's a point of a bow, so jabbing somebody in, in the abdomen wouldn't be very effective, but the throat, it's a different story. And one person pointed out an interesting historical source by a Spanish chronicler talking about the natives in Florida. On a couple of occasions, they shot arrows at the Spaniards, which proved ineffective due to the armor, and then they grabbed their bows and hit them with them. And um, apparently they hit them hard enough with the bow to cause bleeding on the head. And I'm assuming this is under the helmet. It doesn't specifically say that the Spaniard was wearing a helmet at the time, but it would be standard equipment. So I think it's fair to assume that he had a helmet. If he hadn't been, then that would have hit quite a bit harder. And he also talks about how the bows were made. They were made of oak or other hardwood and pretty large, apparently, and they had, they must have had a substantial draw weight because he says that no Spaniard could draw it to his cheek, so to the full length. So that must be quite a hefty piece of wood. In other words, even strong, yeah, I, I, can, I can buy that. You know, sometimes you have embellishment in historical accounts, but this seems plausible enough for sure. So if the archer has a fairly heavy bow and is a strong man, which you have to be to effectively shoot a heavy draw weight bow, and they strike an enemy in the head forcefully, yeah, um, chances are it'll at least knock them out, if not worse. So I was definitely wrong about the bow. There's also another, um, another example in that account where somebody parries a lance thrust with a bow, that's pretty interesting. And um, again, I, I find that plausible because thrusts aren't actually difficult to displace. Thrusts are difficult to defend against because they are quick and they're hard to see coming. If they come straight at you, especially at your face, it's actually difficult to gauge the distance and, and re respond in time. But it's not difficult to set a thrust aside because all you have to do is nudge it a little bit to the side to deflect the force that's coming at you and then it just shoots past you basically. So yeah, this I can, I can, certainly, I can certainly imagine happening. Uh, if you catch it far enough down where, you, where it's a solid structure, you can, you can do that. So it's an option if you had to, you could defend yourself with a bow, even against a sword. It would not be great, it would definitely be a disadvantage, but not as much as I made it out to be. So, good call on that, folks. The other point of contention was the sling, which I made a dismissive remark about how it's, you know, it's a pouch with two strings, what are you gonna do with it in a fight? 
and uh, rightfully people pointed out that if you have a rock loaded already you could use it like a flail I have my doubts about it and I'll show you why but I'll test it out my suspicion is that the rock will fly out of the pouch probably on the first hit and then be unavailable um, some people suggested modifying the sling you know wrapping it with string to keep the rock in it in this hypothetical scenario is not an option the idea is the archer or, or you know the ranged combatant has been rushed and let's say let's say the slinger has a rock in it and try to to get it off first before the uh, the melee fighter rushes in but doesn't have the time so now you're at this distance and you can't you can't use the sling range so you have to defend yourself so you don't have the time to tie a knot or fiddle with it while dodging the enemy's sword or who knows what they have right and the issue with slings is they don't hold on to the rock perfectly they're not supposed to because you want a clean release so if it were to wrap all the way around the rock it would likely throw off your accuracy as you as you try to release it so i just made this really simple one i cut a slot in the in the center which you have on some slings which can grab onto the rock a little better there are a number of different materials used for slings in history but they're generally flat they're not cups so for this i'm going to put on a fencing mask because i have a suspicion it might go flying in my face the cameras are hopefully far enough away to not be endangered by any ricocheting rock hopefully Rocked and loaded. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what I thought. It came right back at me and hit me in the arm. This is why I didn't swing very hard. It came back with quite a bit of force. But it did stay in the pouch. You can say that about it. Well, I don't particularly want to, but I'll give it another try to satisfy your curiosity. Okay, could definitely have done a better job on making this sling. It was a quick job, and uh, on this hit, one of the strings pulled out of the pouch. And um, it also shows the other issue that you generally have with flexible weapons like this. If you're at the wrong distance, so let's say you swing and the guy moves in on you and you're not at the perfect distance, It'll kind of whip around them and do a lot less damage that way. All right, I've tied him more securely now. So the issue here is I have to hit him exactly here. Exactly with the rock. I can't be here. I can't be there. It has to be here precisely. Okay, next attempt. Again, just a tad bit too far okay so the good news is when it falls out of the pouch it's more likely to fly away from me rather than toward me when it stays in the pouch it can go toward me okay i'll try one more time i'll hit him from this side and i'll hit him harder this time even though it seems very risky for me all right yep same thing hits him comes right back hits me in the bicep I picked a smaller rock, so it hurt less this time, but that's what we're dealing with here. So even though people made a good point that it's not as useless as I made it out to be, it's still terrible, <laughs> in my opinion. This is still not a good option. Is it better than unarmed? Possibly, unless you nail yourself in the face with a rock. So the slinger would have to hit a moving head because rock sling to the chest just wouldn't cut it. And while dodging attacks with a sword or an ax or a mace or who knows what, while being at the exact right distance, And finally, a couple more opinions on using a very short weapon like a throwing knife or even a shuriken against somebody with a full-sized weapon. Uh, one person said that I, I wasn't 
giving them enough credit, basically, the defender. Skill, of course, and physical fitness can compensate for things, of course. Can allow you to get away with something. So if, some, if somebody is really quick with, with a knife, they can be extremely dangerous, for sure. Uh, I'm not the fastest guy in the world, but even so, like th this is pretty freaking fast. You know, a quick jab to the eyes or to the chest. Like you can you can do this very fast, and you can you can really push the offense. You know, in this case, offense is the best defense. So here's the thing: when I ramble about different weapons in comparison, I'm comparing the weapon in and of itself. Not, I'm not comparing people here. So, meaning that the assumption is the two fighters are about equally skilled, are about equal in physical fitness. Because we're just comparing the weapon in and of itself. Good footwork and evasive action is very, very useful, no doubt about it. You know, in boxing, you see some really amazing you know, bobbing and weaving. If this guy tries to thrust with a sword and I manage to, to dodge it and you dip under, and counter thrust at the same time, I have a chance. But the thing is, he ain't no slouch either. So this is his unarmed punching range. He has a sword attached to that, okay? Which means with a sword, his range is basically almost the end of the frame here. If I'm here, I'm in danger. I'm in danger. Sure, the fighter with a shorter weapon can try to rush in. And once I'm here, I have the advantage, arguably, because his weapon can't really do too, too much against me here. I mean, it's, it's not quite true because half sorting is meant for very close quarters. But now I have the very effective short weapon here and I can control and I can grapple and all that. So I come in. That's the theory. If I just come walking in there like, Ugh! completely overcommitted and I have no idea what to do. But if I don't, just thrust. I'm done, thrust. I'm dead. This guy isn't just gonna stand there. He can also move around. He can easily step forward and back and create that distance he needs to use the weapon. I remember a sparring match where we used different weapons. My sparring partner had a single-handed messer and I had a long sword. And he was the stronger guy, and he had more experience too. But it wasn't easy for him to get into his measure where he could actually attack me, because I would try to keep him at bay. I would use my longer reach to threaten him. And even if he tried to rush in, I can always step back and thrust or cut at him and force him to defend himself. He can't just just go in recklessly, because here's another thing. In, like, sometimes people make comparison between historical sword fighting and unarmed martial arts nowadays, like MMA, for example. And the problem with that is, in MMA or boxing or what have you, you can afford to take hits. Obviously, it's to be avoided whenever you can, but if you take a punch, unless it's a Mike Tyson level punch directly to the, on the chin, chances are you can continue fighting. Uh, unless you're, you're knocked out right there, which of course happens, but chances are in most situations you, you can take. You can take a couple of hits, you can take a couple of kicks. Try to take a sword thrust to the chest. You can't just tank it. Role-playing games are different because there's hit points, so that's... You can afford, especially as a barbarian, you can afford to tank hits. You are literally a tank. But in an historical duel, you cannot afford to take that because even if you go on and you know, being run through the chest isn't, isn't going to drop you immediately as if you were struck by Zeus's thunderbolt. So you'll be able to, to go on for a bit, but chances are you're going to die. Of course, in a life or death situation, if this is literally all you have, then you're not gonna be like, uh, this is unfair, I surrender. So if that's not an option and the cornered rogue or ranger or whatever has to use this and it was dumb enough to not carry a sidearm, then yeah, they have to do something. So there is a certain chance, 
that they may be able to you know, dodge something and move in, but it's just, the odds are so bad. And that's what, what that was all about. What are the odds? Not very good. So again, the bow ranks a lot higher than I implied in that video because, oh, guess what? You have reach now. Uh, again, unstrung, much better. Uh, one person uh, pointed out that you could try to cut the string uh, if you don't have a knife at hand, because in that case it might be a good idea to use it for fighting. Perhaps you have a sharp enough broadhead that would allow you to cut it, and then you could use it like this, and that would certainly be a lot better. And that's a good point. Canada geese. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's about all I have. Damn you geese, you've interrupted my flow of thoughts. Because I'm such a genius. <laughs> no, I can be, definitely be a dumbass sometimes. And I do appreciate being called out on it. So, yeah, Bo, not too bad in Melee. All right, hope you found this nerdy ramble entertaining. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. And thank you too, Bob, for being a willing victim. Oh, you're not vi willing? What? You talking back to me? Bitch! Using melee weapons. What? No, using ranged weapons in melee. That's a good start to a video. Shut up, squirrel. <laughs>